So once upon a time in a kingdom of trash, there lived two beautiful maidens, the Lady Gigi and the Lady Gwen. And what they did on their free time, rather than fighting battles and swimming through moats and kissing princes, was they got together and recorded with their magical microphones about Japanese cartoons where actual princesses kiss their fake drawn princes. Welcome fam to another episode of the Shoujo Trash Showdown podcast. Spoiler wasn't, alert. No, I'm just kidding. Wasn't that great? I just came up with that off the top that was, of my head. I was, I was thinking, I was like, how are we going to start this? And I was like, oh, she's like already wrote, wrote a novel. Okay, take notes. That novel was just in my brain, fam. Just yes. in my brain. On the spot. That's how we roll. Mm-hmm. So my name is Gigi from Anime Palooza. I am joined once again by my co-host Gwen. Hello. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things shoujo, all things trashy. We've got your otome needs covered, your BL, your yaoi, your yuri, your romance, your manga, I, anything that idol we boys. deem worthy. Idol boys. idol boys. Can we talk about Dr. Camu for a second? I didn't see that one. Who's the one I did see? Hold on. Oh, it was the Cecil one. Didn't he have like a tube of Cecil toothpaste is the, or something? I think Cecil is, is supposed the, to be a dentist. Uh, which is not sexy at all, but let me tell you what is sexy. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of love and camu. So is that like the new poll thing after the... That is the new event. Oh my God. I will be one percenting that fucking Dr. Camu. She will. If I could give you, if I could do the same thing and give you the card, I would. <laughs> So nobody bother me for the next week as I will not answer your DMs because I'll be too busy playing Udapri. Constantly autoing Udapri. Exactly. There is no time in my phone's battery life for oh, anything but this, Dr. Camu. This one's also going to be a set list, isn't it? Yes, it is going to be a set list, which means it's even easier. I think the other ones are easy. Okay, if you're trying, if you're not tiering, the collection true. events are easy. That's if you true. are tiering, it is extremely hard because they make it easier. To a get, bit. Just yeah, just to get the cards. Like yeah. if you just the collection events are super easy just to get the cards. The set list ones are easier to tier because those last three songs, if you max play them, and have like the seventy percent on you and your helper. Mm -hmm. Then you get massive amounts of points, but otherwise it's I, just me playing Setsugetsuka over and over. Oh, I love that song. So much triangle beat that last event with I in the fish tank. That uh, that was a nice card. I like his little outfit. It's cute. I don't like fish. Yeah, I know. I was like, Gigi is not into this at all. I was very happy that I was on a business trip and didn't have time to play. So I like got all the crap from the collection and then I stopped. But this is not our Uda Pre episode. I'm sorry I got distracted. It's always we always I mean how, how many episodes have we not talked about Uda Pre at least once? We talked about Uda Pre in every episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. So, today, friends, fans and fam, we are going to discuss an anime that you guys requested a lot and you made me watch all 24 episodes of and that would be Snow White with the Red Hair and Snow White with the Red Hair season 2 I, we did them all we did them all two, 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 two. <laughs> before we continue I just want to let you guys know there will be spoilers for everything in this anime uh, the manga we haven't read yet it isn't out yet in America um, and we're going to talk about it all out. It is coming out. Yeah, because I, mean, I was like, I want to read the manga. It's been out for a while. Like, oh, it this has anime been came out? out in what? 2015? So I was thinking, okay, so the manga should be out because that's usually how it goes, right? Yep. No. No, they just licensed it. So it is coming yeah. soon, but we don't know anything past the anime. Yeah. And uh, we're going to spoiler it. Um, I think we're going to uh, put some of the trash talk questions inside the episode. So listen very carefully for your shout outs and we'll have the rest at the end in our trash talk segment. 
But before we dive straight into it, you don't care about spoilers. Gwen, would you please read us like when this anime came out and what studio it is and the synopsis that you're going to steal from my anime list? Absolutely. So season one, I think it came out pretty consecu- consecutively, correct? Season two and season one? I think one? it skipped a season. Okay. But I mean, that's still pretty... Pretty consecutive, yeah. Because sometimes it can take like... Okay, yeah. So season one came out um, summer of 2015. Season two came out winter 2016. Yes, winter 2016. So yeah, yeah they so skipped it skipped fall. Yeah. yeah. So that's not too bad. Um, it is by Studio Bones, which is from what I've know it can gather from people's reviews they do good good work and soul this eater one, this one does i mean it's pretty you don't Sometimes. have a lot of well i mean you don't have a lot of noticeable hurt 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 moments you know? <laughs> the little like stutter step moment like somebody fell and bashed their chin and they're having a bad day kind of a moment um it's licensed by funimation so you can stream it on funimation dubbed i believe subbed as well um yes so fun fact is that if you watch it dubbed it has the subtitles for the opposite season on it streaming so it's actually flip-flopped on accident because i was like watching episode two and it was giving me like the titles for episode like 15 and i was like what the fuck's wrong with this uh oh, Funimation! Someone got a little bit of sat on the keyboard there. Yes. Oopsies. So, like Gigi said, twelve and twelve, twelve for season one, twelve for season two. So twenty-four episodes in total. They do a good job of pretty much just continuing. It mean it leaves on a good mark, but then it also just catches up. Like it just there's no weird like gap. Or, like, an episode where it's like, oh, in these past five years, this is what's happened. Okay, now we're continuing. You know how, like, some anime does that? That's really annoying. I hate that. No time skips. I hate time skips and I hate time travel. That gives you alternate uh, realities. I think that's a cop shoot. Anyway, um, it has a good score, 7.9. That's extremely high, I feel, for my anime list. Yes, especially for a shoujo anime. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. So, we'll read the synopsis. Please excuse my stuttering. I suck at reading. All right. Although her no, her no, she sees the, I'm already starting on a bad foot. (laughs) Although her name means Snow White, Shiryuki is a cheerful redhead girl living in the country of, I forgot to say that name. Ten, Tenabru, Ten, Tana, Ten. I don't remember. Tanbaroon. 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 There you go. There you go. Who, um, living in the country of Tanbaroon, who works diligently as an a apothecary at her herbal shop. Herbal shop. Her life changes drastically when she noticed by the silk prince of Tan. Tanabrun, I'm going to say that wrong. Prince Rayu, Rayji, Rayji. Prince wow. Raj. Raj? What? Yeah. It Prince is. Raj. And that's what I was reading the name and I was like, that doesn't look right, but you know, whatever. Hey, Maybe. my girl. My girl. My girl. Rayji. I don't know what. Never mind. We're off. We're, this is what happens when we're. A, 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 A. Okay. <laughs> Prince Raj, who then tries to force her to become his concubine. Unwilling to give up her freedom, Shiryuki cuts off, cuts her long hair and escapes into the forest, where she is rescued by rescued from Raj by Zen Wistalia. Stale. I always want to say wisteria. <laughs> I do too. I guess it's not. <laughs> it's not just you, trust me. The second prince of a neighboring country and his two aides. Hoping to pay her debt to the trio someday, Shiryuki sets off sets her sights on pursuing a career in the court as a court herbalist in Zen's country, Clarence. 
All right. So basically, our main girl is a drug dealer. <laughs> She's getting that weed. Who's, who's looking for a prince. Well, the prince is looking for her. Many princes are looking for her. Mm. Um, if you went into this expecting a retelling of Snow White, like Wrong. the fairy tale, like I did. Yeah, that that didn't happen. That's As, what I first thought when I was like, so this is starting off kind of interesting. And then it just never got to it. And I'm like, OK, it kind of started out like they could have done it because Raj yeah. poisons Zen. And I was like, oh, True. so it's like Snow White, but backwards. <laughs> like she'll kiss Zen and wake him from his poisonous sleep or whatever. Right. And I, and I was like really going to be into that. And then it turned out to be not that at all. Gigi does not enjoy watching this anime. Let me tell you, I did not like this anime <laughs> at all. Which is funny because I love this anime. <laughs> you want to know why I like this anime? For the Okay, so there's yes. one main reason why I love this anime. What is a typical shoujo trope for storytelling? That the, the female protagonist is a wet paper bag. Okay, other than that, story-wise. Um, love triangle? Well, I mean, there's kind of a love triangle. There is kind of a love triangle. There's, like, two two sets of three that happen. <laughs> there's, like, two different ones. Okay. But it's because there's an issue, and then they fix it. And then something happens... And then they fix it. It's not like this misunderstanding for 12 episodes and then they Got finally you. get over the first one. You know what I mean? It's like people start to question her. Um, the uncle or whatever starts to question her or the duke or whatever. And she's like, listen, dude, I'm here because I've earned it and I'm not here for handouts. Leave me the F alone. You know what I mean? Like, she stands up for herself, too. She doesn't wait for the prince to come and save her. I mean, he does. But, he, but I mean, quite honestly, most of the time when he comes to rescue her, she's always, like, halfway out the door anyway. I just didn't like Shirayuki. Like, I yeah. found that the only episodes of the show that I did like were the ones that Shirayuki wasn't in. Or the ones where she was in it just a little bit, like the one where she got drunk. I liked that episode. Oh my god, that episode was so funny. <laughs> Obi did not know what to do with himself. I know, it was so great. Um, I liked that one. I liked the one with the backstory between Zen and Mitsuhide. Uh -huh. Ian Sinclair. I liked that episode. I liked the one with Zen's older brother, like when he first gets introduced. When you don't know if he's really a dick or he's just being like a angsty older brother. Yes, I liked that one. <laughs> and the best episode was the second to last episode where Ian Sinclair is a slut. <laughs> oh, my God. That oh. if uh, you don't laugh at that episode, there's something wrong with your laughing box and you oh. need to go to the doctor. I just didn't like Shirayuki. Like I couldn't. And everybody's like, oh, she's such a good female protagonist. And I agree that she's a different female protagonist from the ones you would normally see in a romance anime because she mm -hmm. does stand up for herself. She does have goals and she has like at least sort of a path that she wants to go down until the last episode, which really pissed me off. But we'll get to that later. Um, I just I thought she was boring. Like she had I guess she's boring because she never really she she literally doesn't find out that she actually likes him until like the last second to last episode or something like that because it's not the last one because the second to last one is the um misu hate misu hide who accidentally gets like a high off of something he tips over and then actually slightly like a man slut but I don't um, I don't think so. I mean, she knows that she likes him. She tells him early yeah, on that she loves him. Yeah, but she doesn't come him. to she doesn't ad really admit it. Like she knows she likes him, but she like never wants to admit it or I don't know what her issue But she be. does admit it. Like at the end of season 1, they're together. 
And well, then, kind of. No, they kind of, are literally together. But I never got together. that feeling that they were like, I, but I never got that feeling that they were like together together until the end of season two. Oh no, I got that feeling right away at the end of season one and I was like, well, there it is. They're together now. Great. What's the conflict going to be for season two? And we actually did get a conflict in season two in the form of Obi. I want to talk mm-hmm. about that in more detail later because we got a question about it. But okay. um, I just, I thought she was so boring and like the shoujo stomach drops did not come near enough for a romance anime for me because Zen and Shirayuki were like never even in the same room together. Like yeah. they go episodes and episodes without even seeing each other. Like the first half of season two is her and Raj and I was just kind of like, why is this even here? And then there's this whole thing where she gets kidnapped by some fucking pirates. Yeah. And like season one, that whole fucking season was just boring. Like <laughs> literally, I could not force myself through season one. Yeah. It took me forever to watch it, which is why this episode is delayed. <laughs> so yeah. no front but- kids. I just could not watch it. It was so boring. I feel... Like the first two episodes are first two episodes. First two seasons are probably like three, maybe four books. Maybe the way that it's presented, in my opinion, I think it's going. I don't think it covers a lot of the manga the way that it is. But the it's um, over. Like it had a definitive ending at season two. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out if I can see how many chapters it is i mean like (laughs) if the manga is still ongoing that means there could be more of this anime in the future but i really don't think there's gonna be any more like it ended very definitively it says august published august 10th 2006 to question mark which which means it's still going a manga well a lot of manga will say that but it hasn't had anything new for like 10 years so Mm. i mean clamp um (laughs) Which still makes me angry that half their shit isn't finished. It's like, why start new? Finish one and then move on. I know there's usually like a thing that tells you like, ugh, they have one shots. I'm going to figure this out. Okay. No, that's I can't do that. I'm going to figure that out, figure that out as we continue talking. Okay. But, I mean. Because um, I feel like there might have been. They just feel like they needed a little bit more. There was some, like, I can understand why you probably didn't enjoy it as much as I did. But I do would have to agree that there's probably something small that's missing. Okay, chapter 105 discussion. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty long. So. That's not going to be two seasons. 105? Yeah, 105 would definitely go into, like, another season. It did have at least, like, six arcs in the anime which is a lot for a manga but I just uh, I know the first season had to set up everything and had to get backstories out of the way but like in the second episode you see um that dude who tries to kidnap her who and I immediately you know when the first time I watched this was like okay they're gonna do different fairy tales every episode because I was like this is just like Little Red Riding Hood that guy is the wolf like this could definitely happen and then it it didn't turn out that way and once again I was disappointed so you see that guy he's a one-off character and in season two he like comes back and I was just like and he's like a prominent role in season two and I was just kind of like why like I just yeah it just (sighs) I feel like if there was a little bit more conflict I guess because we're so used to like trash for me well yeah that in reverse harem that it's like okay where's when does Obi actually like grow a set of balls and actually like tries to you know what I mean I mean I love drama in my anime and so maybe that's why I didn't like this because to me this was just slice of life bullshit in a slightly medieval setting with romance in there sometimes when it was convenient for them Mm -hmm. like I did like the pirate part 
like I liked the yeah. female pirate. I thought she was pretty badass. And then the fact that one of them was Shiryuki's dad. But somehow I tuned out and missed how Shiryuki's dad got mixed into everything. So like after that, I was just kind of like, well, I guess her dad's here. Like, I really don't care to go back and try and figure but, out why. But what I was, I got a little sidetracked. What I was saying about um, if there was a more seasons how I feel like now that everyone's gotten like to their actual character if you will like Raj has developed Obi is developing Kiki and Mitsuhide is the developing I feel like oh and that the that prince the like poor prince <laughs> Miha M- M- Mihaya Mihaya you know what I'm talking about? The wolf boy? I guess. The one that's like his family. He was yeah, like that's a duke. Him. And, yeah, okay. I feel like because he's kind of developed. So I I have this, this feeling that since Raj gave her that, you know, you are a friend of the crown, this like title that like because now she has that title – other things are going to be coming to her and she like the um what's his face Zen's brother is going to be more of like expecting more from her since he apparently likes to just test everyone of their well-being I don't know but like I don't know I feel like there's going to be more drama but we just haven't gotten there yet because it still like was developing that's why i feel like the anime only covered a few books it may be like 20 to 30 chapters which out of 105 because that discussion for 105 came out a couple hours ago oh actually all of them say oh no it was just updated a couple hours ago it was posted on february 24th so that's recent so it's still ongoing it is ongoing. So we could see more of this. Mm-hmm. Um, here's here's my thing. I think all of the characters individually are really interesting. Like, if I had an anime just about Zen and him fighting shit, I would be okay <laughs> with it. If I had an anime just about Raj and all the dumb decisions that he makes, I would be okay with it. Somehow there would be drama in there somewhere. Like, and it would be interesting. But I feel that if you threw all these interesting characters in here and then threw Shirayuki in there, like it Mm -hmm. just. Because like I said, the episodes where she's not in them were the ones I liked the most. I think she just brings down the tone of the whole show. Like if it's something that you're looking for, that's more. I don't want to say action oriented because there are action scenes in here. There are fight scenes. There's a lot of them actually. Um, Oh, she just doesn't have any on-screen presence for me. I mean, she's a fucking pharmacist. (laughs) I thought she was a drug lord. She is also a drug lord. Maybe if (laughs) if this were Snow White with the drug lords, it would be more (laughs) exciting to me. Maybe if this, if she were in banana fish, Oh my god! Like I, I could get by. Could you imagine? That would be awkward. So I, I found the answer to my question. Okay. Season one ends at volume four, chapter seventeen, while season two ends at volume eight, chapter thirty-two. But wait, plot twist! Apparently, season two has an alternate ending. What? Yeah. Does it have an OVA? There must be, and it's probably not available. I mean, I don't own side part story. two. There's I only own part story. one, so I haven't seen the OVA if there is one. Okay, so yeah, it was bundled with the limited edition 15th volume OVA. But there's literally no description. Nothing. <sighs> I mean, I thought Such season two life. ended up pretty nicely. Like, it tied everything up well. So if this is where the anime ended and there were no more, I'd be fine with it. I mean, I'm fine with it anyway because I don't have to watch any more of it. But I do, I do think it is a good um, ending 
for obviously for an ongoing manga because a lot of times we'll get an ending to something and it just feels incomplete right it's just kind of like okay bye like it's so common for us to get an anime and it's just doesn't have a proper ending right and then we'll get a sequel like six years down the road right um and I even thought season one wrapped up really nicely. So if we didn't get a season two, you know, I would have been okay with season one ending the way that it ended. Yeah, it really doesn't doesn't have a bad at all, season one or season two. The fact that it got a season two is probably they didn't know how popular it was going to be, and then it got popular, so they made a season two. But why didn't they make a season three maybe, or four? Maybe they will. I guess that's true. You never know. I mean, Fruits Basket's getting a reboot, so. I know. You're real excited for it. I am. I am, but I'm still waiting for the day when we're going to get the same treatment that Fruits Basket is getting for Orin Orin High School Host Club. I will wait for that day because that will be a reboot I will watch. Like, usually the red-haired female protags in anime have something about them that makes them innately likable. Like even Yona from Yona of the Dawn, which again is another romancy shoujo anime I didn't really care for. Um, but I liked Yona more than I like this girl. I guess I didn't like Yona at some points because she just got super annoying and super princessy. And I'm like, I get it. I like princesses. I know, but she was like prissy princess, like, oh, I need someone to like clean my fingernails. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, girl, you're roughing it right See, now. You should be that's used to it. Probably why I liked her. <laughs> but that one part though, oh, holy crap, I got to that one part and I was like, oh, okay, we can't talk about it. No, we can't talk about Yona. A different anime. And- <laughs> but uh, y- only one anime at a time. I know this one. We're talking about Snow White. Snow White, which should have been like the fucking fairy tale, and it wasn't. It did have some fairy tale like elements in it. You know, okay, so if we want to think a little bit like Snow White, so we have to have seven. So there's Zen, there's Obi, there's, I guess, technically Misuhide, which I don't see him as being like going after her at all. Um, and then there's Raj, Mihaya, the wolf guy. That's five. Maybe later on we get two more boys. Well, like when I actually ends up being like seven. Well, when I saw the first episode, I was like, okay, we have Snow White. Zen would be the prince. The evil queen would be Raj. Obi, (laughs) or not Obi, uh, Kiki and Mitsuhide would be dwarves. Yeah, okay. Kiki could be a dwarf. Um, And like all they needed was. A huntsman and it, we would have had snow white and i was like i can get behind it and then the second episode which sort of was like little red riding hood and i could get behind it and then after that i forgot everything that happened because it wasn't like any other fairy tale and i was just like they could have done so much with this it was like okami-san and, and the seven awesome. companions which i really wanted to like because it was about fairy tales and it was awful yeah i i feel like the name is misleading it's very misleading like I don't, I, I get why it would be like going to a foreign country where there's no one who's blonde and everyone stares at you because you're blonde or you have red hair or you have pink hair. Like if it's very abnormal for their culture, then yeah, you're going to get looks and stares. So obviously in this anime for their culture, having extremely crimson red hair is abnormal in probably any culture naturally, but at the same time. It felt like it was such a focus and then it like became less of the focus. You know what I mean? Like they just kind of like slowly, I mean, except for the pirates. Like I, but... I just wanted the focus to be on something interesting. Mm-hmm. And to me, like it just never hit that point. Like I said, I don't remember much of season one, like at all, because it just 
was not interesting. It was Shiryuki learning how to be a drug dealer. I'm sorry. Everybody who likes this, she's not really a drug dealer. She's an herbalist. She wants to be in work in an apothecary. She likes to make medicine and heal people and all that new agey bullshit. But I'm mm-hmm. making a joke here. So to me, she's a fucking drug dealer. So <laughs> I just like, I, that was basically the whole thing behind season one. And I was just like, I thought she made it like four episodes in. So what was the point of the rest of this? Like, I just, yeah. I just thought it was boring. And then I wanted her and Zen to like make out and they did make out. But then like, there wasn't anything after that. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, they did something really cute for about 10 seconds. And then they tried to make it like that didn't even happen because, oh no, for, you know, Zen can't be with a commoner whatever i um... but it's also like he says he can't but like his brother really doesn't care he's just being the asshole older brother i liked the brother once the brother came in i got more interested he is very a very interesting and i feel very complex character that i had originally thought he was just going to be there for a couple of episodes and like leave and that was it but i feel like he's going to have there's going to be, I feel like there's more that he's going to do and he's going to cause more to happen. I mean, like, that's when it started to pick up for me was when the older brother started to cause some drama just mm-hmm. because nothing was happening. Um, and then Obi came and at first Obi, I was like, whatever, it's Obi. Like, it's just some fighter dude who did something but he's he's i love him okay i grew i fucking grew to love obi so let's let's segue this into a question from one of the masters of segues himself classy spartan manga man 9000 who asks us while it's pretty clear that zen slash shirayuki is the canon couple i'm more than aware that you enjoy more than vanilla in your romances Yes. I ask you this. If Shirayuki was to end up with anyone else in the show, who and why do you think it would work? Obi, Mitsuhide, Obi. Kiki, etc. Obi. Obi. <laughs> oh, God. 100%. That little thing Obi. where they're running and he almost grabs her hand and then he doesn't. He makes he that around. little twitch. That no. that little hand twitch had more passion in it than like three quarters of Zen and Shiryuki's relationship. Mm-hmm. Oh God, Obi, why? Like he's nothing that I would like like physically in an anime character, and like the voice didn't do anything for me, like. But just the fact that he wanted Shirayuki so badly and he didn't go for it made me freaking love Obi. I would have loved to see that, like, what that could have developed into. Because right after that, they're like, they have that moment in the forest. Yes. Like, in that little garden area. So, like, how different would that part have been if Obi, like, not even kiss her, but, like, grab her hand turn her around and like give her that embrace you know what i mean yes like what kind of conflict would that have caused and i get it that obi is loyal to zen and i and that's probably why he'd stop and i get it that shirayuki is crazy for zen even though she doesn't really show it on her face or anything God, God knows she just she's a drug dealer. I mean, whatever. She probably has some kind of mood levelers in her backpack. <laughs> and I love pretzels. Oh, I just oh God, like if Obi just would have made one move, I would have given it two more points in my rating. What did you rate it? At? Uh, five. Season one was a five. Season two, five and a half. Just because it had more Obi Because in it. it had more Obi in it. No, actually, it got that extra <laughs> half point because of episode 23. Oh, the drunk the, episode. Yeah, the drunk episode. The, the, the Ian Sinclair is a slut episode. 
not hypnosis, but the like. Yeah, that was the hypnosis flower. I know, but it's like not. I don't know how else to describe it. But I, I don't know. It was weird, but yeah. So like, uh, if only Obi. I'm sure there's fan fiction somewhere I can read, but. Probably. Mandarake's probably got it. <laughs> All that doujin. Mm. But, like, I really, like, other than Obi, I couldn't see her with anyone else. I think her and Raj would actually be really interesting and more of, like, what I would go for. I feel like because of his progression, maybe he'll start to try to pursue her again. Like, he really doesn't care for Zen as he's not committed or not committed. You know what I mean? He's not Obi. He's not, like... His he's not two loyal. allies that he's not Kiki or Misuhide. He can do whatever the hell he wants. He gave her that title, friend of the crown. He gave her some like snazzy necklace thing going on. <laughs> like he could say, like, you know what I mean? I f- like something could come out of that. I kind of liked him better when he was an asshole, but I did like how like this- he developed. Yes. And I feel like even though he has developed as a better, because he literally changed for her. Yep. He wanted to become the prince that his country could be proud of. Yep. So, and in turn, became the prince that she can be proud of. And, you know, I feel that Shirayuki changed all these other people, but the one person she didn't change was Zen. Yeah. Yeah. Because what is what does he do besides sign papers faster? <laughs> like get in trouble. All of these other characters had major development because of Shiryuki in some way, shape, or form. But Zen was always a prince. Like he always was the one who was gonna swoop in and save her or carry her up those stairs or do whatever like I don't and think see, that, that he got development other than he learned how to love somebody yeah somebody <laughs> um, so because it, it it also sucks that the, the manga is ongoing and it's not available here yet like it's I, th- I think it was supposed to come out like in the next couple months the first one comes out but I'm the kind of person where I'm not going to buy a manga when it first starts coming out I'm going to wait until there's like 10, 12 or when I know there is an end because I really don't like getting sucked into something and it becomes like you know like One Piece that to me would be super hard to try to catch up on and that's a lot of money yeah like it's just I like to know that the story has an end. So it's much like when I'm at work and I have a list of everything to do. I literally start at the bottom and work my way up. <laughs> I don't start at the top. I start at the bottom because I know where the end is. It's not that I'm reading a manga backwards, <laughs> but it's like my ongoing struggle with skip beat. Like every time I think it's almost done. Oh, here comes another omnibus. And I'm like, God damn it. When is this going to be over? <laughs> I'm so invested now. Like I'm not going to stop buying or reading them. But at the same time, I'm like, holy shit. There's so it's much like of you've it. Already com- right. You've already committed to the 29 other omnibuses. Exactly. So you might as well just keep on going. I was talking. I was talking with my boyfriend the other day and we were talking about One Piece because he loves One Piece and he's like mm-hmm. caught up with the anime and the manga because like we watched the newest episode of the anime and I'm like I'm on episode 98 of One Piece like and I don't plan on watching anymore. How am I going to get into episode 895 you know and he's like just watch it. She, he's like you'll be fine and I like I got it like it was just like something you could just jump in on and not feel like. It, an absolute loser because everyone else is up to date and you're like yeah i watched season exactly one. but like watching 900 episodes of one piece is such a huge commitment like i don't want to commit myself it to is. that it is because there's so much other things that i already have like i've purchased it's in my queue games that i have like I- <laughs> we have so much to do and not enough time to do it like i was talking the other day about how i would really just like to watch an anime for fun 
and not have to like mm-hmm. do some kind of work on it which to me watching snow white with the red hair felt like work because i didn't like because it i wasn't enjoying it. myself and i was like i have to get through this so we can do a podcast on it you know and i feel bad because you guys like this so much and i can't give it a glowing review because personally i and just didn't shouldn't. care for it and you shouldn't i mean that's this is what's what's i'm sure we, we have said this before but this is what's really good about me and Gigi is we may like the same type of stuff but we have different opinions about the same stuff like Gigi, like, if you wanted to know, maybe we should do, like, a Yowie 101. I don't know. Like, <laughs> beginner's guide to Yowie. Because, like, I know it's there. I don't actively watch it or read the manga or anything like that. But, I mean, sometimes it's hard to know, is this going to be good? Or does this kind of cross kind of a lot of borders? Because Yowie does that a lot. Yeah. So, like... And since there's so much anime out there, it's so hard to commit to some things that you know automatically you're not going to like because you don't want to waste your time when you could be watching something or reading something you would have enjoyed. Right. So it's it's so hard, especially when like this has two seasons. Okay, it has two seasons. I thought both seasons were 25 episodes. No. (laughs) Thank God they were. Oh, God. Be. She would be at my apartment. She would have drove all the way here to my apartment and say, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here now confiscating your, your internet so you, you can't watch it. And so what we have to say, though, canceled. Episode canceled. canceled. But, but it's, it is different. I mean, based off of the, the anime we have been talking Yeah, about, it's very it's different. different. It's an actual, like, classic shoujo anime comparatively yes it's more shoujo less trashy yes um this is not in the dumpster this is on the book shelf that's next to the dumpster exactly and you know to be fair i think if i weren't going in expecting it to be a fairy tale retelling i might have liked mm-hmm. it a little more yeah because you kept expecting something out of it that never was going to happen right like, because there was, I was actually reading, I'm on the manga page, and it has synonyms, synonyms, so the other alternative titles, like Four Seasons, Color of August, like, maybe you could have said the Four Seasons, or the f- Four Seasons of the Color Red, or something like, where, I don't know, something just, because that sounds more intriguing than, than the Snow White, Snow White with the red hair, like, with, <laughs> with the red hair. Not with red hair. With the red hair. Like, my sister's like, oh, you're watching Snow White with red hair? I'm like, Snow White with the red hair. She goes, that's the untitled. I'm I'm aware. Like, if this were just, like... It should have been something different. I I would say that I would like it more, but then again, now that I'm thinking about it, I really don't like period piece anime like this. Like, Scrapped Princess was kind of like this. And I hated Scrapped Princess. And everybody likes Scrapped Princess, but me. I haven't uh, seen it. Don't. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually don't. don't. And I should and I love. Don't like. I love shit with princesses in it. I love medieval times. We're going to medieval times for my friggin' birthday this year, and then I'm going again in June. Like, I love medieval times. Is that like an indoor dinner? Yeah, thing it's where they joust yeah. And that's stuff? the dinner show where they joust and stuff, and they <sighs> fight. Can I go with you? I've always. Wanted oh my to god, go. girl! Yeah, of course. Come down to Texas. <laughs> Can I crash on your couch? Well, you'd be crashing on Chris's <laughs> oh, couch, in Texas? so yes. Oh man, <laughs> damn it! I gotta go to Texas for that. I'd be like, sweetie. We have. I know. Next time you're here, we're gonna go. It's called the Royal Dump. Oh yeah, let's totally and go. It's a, and it's a dinner. It's a dinner thing. I've been there twice. The first, the second, t- first, no, the first time we went. So my dad's, you know, a little bald on the top. You know, he's 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 older. He's, he's a grandpa. Mm-hmm. So they have these bar winches who n- know how to make their boobs have amazing cleavage. Oh, yeah. I, I add. So they're doing like this little, they're singing a song or something about cleaning or something. 
So this lady, this is actually a really funny story. So this lady comes up to my dad. She's standing behind him. She puts his, her hands like on his shoulder and it's kind of swaying back and forth and singing. My dad's like, whatever. She grabs his head, puts his, his head into her cleavage, <laughs> grabs this rag and starts shining his head. <laughs> oh my God, I want to go real bad. <laughs> And then gets him up on stage later on. And then the king says, Sir, you have such a nice bald head. You could have put the whole nativity scene on your head and it would fit. <laughs> and my dad's just like the face he makes is that like scrunched up disapproval voice and face. And I'm just like, oh, my That's God. That's great. But the plot twist. So we go to this before my dad met hit my now stepmom. She used to work as a minister at a church and he finds out that there's some people who used who go to that went to that church at that time who used to work there lo and behold one of them was the lady who had put my dad's head in her <laughs> i was like small fucking world are you kidding i love so yeah it. that's what me and Gigi are gonna do next oh my god i'm totally down that sounds like my kind of party <laughs> that's why i was like this should be my kind of party and it wasn't hmm. i just i feel i feel bad i feel bad I and usually i don't like historical anything like someone was saying they're like don't you like historical pieces no I was like, no i don't like the queen victoria this or like that TV show called The Crown that everyone loves. I'm like, I, I can't. When it's not like a fairy tale, I can't get into it. Because it usually has got a lot of like begging and a lot of adultery and a lot of stuff that I like. The only live action period movie that I can tolerate over and over and over again is A Knight's Tale. Well, that's because <laughs> Heath Ledger's fucking in it. I mean, yes. if we want to get technical. But I mean, even that, that's like slightly modernized. I mean, some of the dresses that girl wears in that movie is not <laughs> Renaissance safe. It's more of like, is that latex or is that fishnet dress? Hmm. Um, yeah. And why do you have blue in your hair? This was just like a really boring Ren fair. Then that's always a sad friend. Like where all you can do is shop, but nothing is really cool for you to shop for. And then. And the shows suck. Yeah. And every once in a while, like the hot guy will walk by, but it'll be too quick for you to get a good look at him. Or if you're from Missouri and you go to the one in St. Louis, there's always that guy. It's very piratey here at our Renaissance Fair. Hmm. So there's always that guy walking around as Jack Sparrow. Of course. Even though that is the wrong, wrong, wrong oh, time, God. sir. Wrong time. But it's for some reason, it, they're like, oh, it's the French Renaissance. There was pirates. And I was like, bullshit. Bullshit. You just wanted to walk around like Jack Sparrow. It's fine. <sighs> but I, I mean, I guess that's what Snow White with the red hair is to me. Like, if you guys like, like, really nice slow paced romancy slice of life stuff this will definitely be for you yeah that's i don't like that at all which why it wasn't for me but gwen you like stuff like that i like slow stuff every once in a while like it's just nice to have that relaxing anime like i loved what is it something witch flying witch, witch um, that made me fall asleep flying witch it's super like and I also watched uh, Tanaka Kun is always listless. I love that anime. I thought it was hilarious, but I think you couldn't get past the first couple episodes of either of those anime. I haven't seen Tanaka Kun yet. Um, Flying Witch, I watched the okay. first episode and thought it was boring. See, it's got to grab me. It's got to have something that will keep me interested. And this it didn't. It's more shoujo than trashy. That's probably why. It's very shoujo. It is very, a you know, like I said, a very normal shoujo anime. Now, did you watch this subbed or did you watch it dubbed? I've only ever seen it dubbed. Okay, same here. Um, what did you think of the dub? Did you like it? Did you think the voices fit the characters? I didn't think it was bad. 
Um, I don't think there was one voice that kind of irritated me at all because there's usually always that one character where you're like, it doesn't fit at all. I feel like maybe Raj could have had a slightly more menacing tone to him a little bit because the the voice he did have seemed a little bit more playful than menacing and I feel like him at the beginning of the anime should have been very like not menacing as like evil but I mean he obviously got around he never he always got what he wanted he wanted to make her his concubine so like his sex slave so I mean there should have been some sort of like fear out of him Right. I mean, to leave everything you've ever known and to just chop off all your hair, I would need to be shaking in my boots. <laughs> Not just because I don't want to have sex with you for the rest of my life and be this concubine, but just this utmost fear. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I just never got that. Right. But maybe that's because he, that's not really what he who he was. You know what I mean? He just wanted to be in the it crowd, and that's what the it crowd was doing. Right. But, because he changed pretty fast. He did. So, but, I mean, I didn't think, was there a voice that just irked you every single time they opened their, I mean, other than Shiryuki, because I know you just didn't like her as a whole. I didn't like so her, well, her I didn't like her example. dub voice either. Brina Palencia is a great actress. She does really great work. I just I had watched the first episode subtitled and Shiryuki's voice is really high. So I was mm. expecting a more flighty kind of higher pitched voice going into it. And yeah. Brina doesn't have that voice. So when I thought it was time for the shoujo stomach drops and for all this cute, super cute, adorable stuff to be happening in my head, the voices mm. didn't match. I mean, it, it didn't bother me. It wasn't a bad performance. I don't think there were any bad performances in here. In fact, I really liked, um, obviously, Mitsuhide because it's Ian Sinclair. Hello. Obviously. obviously. Um, Austin Tyndall, a lot of the time, is not my favorite voice actor. Um, but he was pretty good as Obi. Not as good as he was in Hitori Jume, My Hero, which is my favorite Austin Tyndall performance. But... I, re I did enjoy him as Obi. And then for Megan, who asked us to sing Sexy back. For Sexy Josh, throwing it down as Zen. I'm bringing Sexy Josh. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. I'm not a huge Zen girl. So I just, it was all right. Like, I. I feel like he's dreamy, but he's dreamy for Shiryuki. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like a very stereotypical shoujo pairing there which like, is fine i quite honestly just want him to turn it like have this moment of like unable to control his his inner beast and just like you know what i mean like sure yuki got drunk that one time i would love to see zen drunk oh my god with like misuhide and kiki and then obi just like making it worse yes oh and then all of a sudden here comes prince raj Oh my god, yes. I thought the dub was good. It wasn't my favorite dub ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any major problems with it, but I was, was too lazy to watch more you. than the first episode subtitles. <laughs> when in doubt, when the lazy happens, just turn on the dub and everything will be fine. Yep. All right. So, um, do we got more questions? I we do have questions. We have quite a few. We of them. did. Let's let's answer some more. So, um, Ro both Rosie and Katarina kind of asked the same question. So we're gonna lump them both together. Um, so Rosie asks, "What fairy tale would you like to see inspire an anime much like this one?" And Katarina asked, "If there were to be another fantasy anime made about a different fairy tale, which fairy tale would you like it to be based off of?" Mine would be Little Red Riding Hood. 1,000% give me an adult Little Red Riding Hood anime. I don't care if it's in space. I don't care if it's sci-fi. I don't care 
how it takes place. I just want one. If you guys have ever seen the movie Freeway with Reese Witherspoon and Kiefer Sutherland, I want it to be like that. That is what I want. You might like these books called Sender. Oh, I have them. I haven't okay. read them, I but say. I do own them. My sister loves them. I don't know. If I can't have Little Red Riding Hood, I want Rapunzel. Uh, I don't know, because I was never like a prin- like Disney princess girl. And I never, like, I've watched the movies, but I never was like, like when someone asked, like, who's your favorite fairy tale princess? And I'm like, um, Wally. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, and I don't even, like, I'm not like a big Mickey or Minnie fan. I like Oswald. <laughs> I love Oswald. It's not wrong. But like ugh, fairy tale. I mean, I don't know how they could actually make it into a proper anime, but like the number one fairy tale movie that I watched as a child was The Last Unicorn. I absolutely Isn't loved The Last Unicorn that an movie. anime anyway? Well, it's animated. Oh, it's not anime. It's like no, American it's animated not. or European or something. Yes. It's American. The band, there was one band that did all the music for it and they are called America. Oh. So. I've never seen The Last Unicorn. Oh my God. I have two copies. <laughs> I have the 20th, an- I have like a 15th or 20th anniversary and then there's a new anniversary edition and I need to get the Blu-ray version because I really want to see what it looks like on Blu-ray. I have issues. No, you don't. But I don't. But I don't know how. I guess what would be interesting, because in the movie, there's a wizard and he turns her into a human. So I guess that could be an interesting concept, like a unicorn hiding to not be hunted. And they're like disguising themselves as like a human, like. Hmm. taking that kind of an idea out of it because he turns her into a human because this guy has this red bull there's a story of the red bull where the red bull has chased all the unicorns out of the out of the world and chased them into the ocean so now they're captives in the ocean and the red bull won't let them out so the red bull is coming senses that she's a unicorn so he turns her into a human hmm yeah it's a great I'm going to have to watch it. I know it was on Netflix a little while ago. I don't know if it's still on there. If not, you can usually get a copy of it on DVD pretty inexpensive on Amazon. Sounds like a plan. All right. Weekend movie night. We got more questions that are sort of the same. So Dylan asks, what other fantasy romance anime would you recommend to people? And Katerina also asks, what other fantasy romance would you recommend? So, I don't like fantasy romance, guys. There's not a lot. Like someone, I actually recently saw one post something about fantasy anime of how underrated it is. And it, like a traditional fantasy anime, like not just like something with you, with wizards or something <laughs> with yokai. You know what I mean? Like an actual legit, fantasy anime. Like, Something with elves. Like, like Dungeons and Dragons Lotus bullshit. Wars. Right. Elves and ogres and all of that. And someone said, can someone please recommend some fantasy reverse harem anime? And I'm like, all over it. I got you. <laughs> um, Does Fushigi Yugi but, count as a fantasy anime? It's hard to say because... Is it fantasy because she's in modern times and now she's going into period? I would say more of it fantasy because it's like ancient China with. I've I've literally only seen maybe five episodes and it was maybe 20 years ago. Oh, God, girl. Fushi Yugi is my fucking jam. (laughs) I've been meaning to watch it and I just never like when it came out on DVD. When it finally came out on DVD, it was like each DVD set was like 80 bucks. Okay, I was still in high school. That's it's not streaming happening. now. Crunchyroll, dude. Oh. I'm late to the game, man. <laughs> Classic anime weekend. 
I'm trying to th- um, I'm trying to think like what Scrap Princess I hated. That's the other one I could think of off the top of my head. I'm gonna look at genre of fantasy. You know, when I was a kid, I always called it gender. Oh, no. <laughs> Until someone said it's gender. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what has like knights and horses and Yona of the Dawn. Eh. eh. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not. It's not like... my favorite. Yeah, if Yona of the Dawn is fantasy, then Fushigi Yugi is fantasy. To okay. which I would recommend and wholeheartedly Fushigi Yugi. I wouldn't really see Card Captors as a romance. Card Captors is not a fantasy. I mean, I guess it's fantasy because it has magic, it has magical girls. So well, then fucking fantasy. Sailor Moon is a fantasy. You can't say that just because you're a magical girl, it's a fantasy. It's true. It's like, what? what I guess, okay, fantasy means. As I have that magical feel, but I can't feel like Kamigami no Asobi, I would not say that that's No, it's not. It's a reverse harem. Mm, Maybe Kamisama Kiss? No. No? Mm -mm. It's modern. Magic Knight Ray Earth? Yes. Yes, I would recommend Magic Knight Ray Earth, although it does not have a lot of romance in it. It it has no, some. It does have. It has suggestive romance. If, pairings, if you have but they not never, like, seen Magic Knight Ray Earth, do yourself a favor and go watch Magic Knight Ray Earth. <laughs> it's worth at least once for you to scream at the ending of both seasons. Uh, pre tier. Pre, I love pre tier. I've been watching it. Everyone's oh tomorrow. God, pre tier is really good. Yes, one pre tier is Snow White. Pre tier is the Snow White with the red hair that I wanted. What is this fun story? fact? Is my hair one? used to be like the main girl in pre tiers that like flared out like a porcupine. I had hair like that too. I should. Send, I I literally I saved a picture of it recently <laughs> because I saw it and I said, "Ooh, that was my hair." Um, I found another one. I haven't seen it. It looks very fantasy e there's a guy with like a harp what what is the hand. name of it the english title is the is called loving angel angelique when hearts awaken neo neo angelique neo angelique abyss no. it might be adaptation is An- angelique that's the manga. so that it so neo angelique is an otome game which has two seasons of an anime, but I yes there is, that, but I think this is different. different. I don't think that's Neo Angelique. Uh, Escaflone. Robots. <laughs> oh, I mean, I do like Escaflone. I've got I've never finished it's Escaflone. People with Magic wings. Night Rares also has robots. People. It does. They were gonna do figures. Of those robots. Why would I want the robot? Because they were going to have, like, their capes and everything. Like, they were going to be in this, like, kind of, like, dancing type pose. And then they just, like, I saw one picture of all three. And then it. Ugh. They looked really good. Because I, like, I love Magic Knight Ray Earth. I'm not much of, like, the whole robot thing in it. But these looked amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, those painted are going to be amazing. And it just never. Not necessarily fantasy, but maybe Kaleido Star. It's circus. Which is. It is very different. I didn't like the dub. Neither did I. But I love Kaleido Star. Tokyo Mew Mew. Never seen it. Me neither. I, I wouldn't consider X. A romance. I wouldn't consider X much of anything. <laughs> you know, I used to be obsessed. Oh, God. I tried watching it so many times. <laughs> Fell asleep so many times. Um, It's really oh. hard, guys, to find even just plain old fantasy anime. Yeah. Let alone fantasy romance anime. For me, definitely mm-hmm. would recommend Fushigi Yugi to you. That's more like Chinese period fantasy um, yeah. Magic Knight Ray Earth, which does have robots, 
and pre-tier because I forgot pre-tier existed, but it's actually really good. Yeah. Those would be my three. Yeah, there's just not. Well, I mean, there's that Alice, 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 one, uh, wonderful Wonderland. I didn't see that. I don't because it makes no fucking sense. How about the Wizard of Oz, guys. Oh, Earl and Fairy. It's Earl and Fairy. I bought that. I didn't know they made an an. I didn't know they made an anime. Yeah, I bought that. I haven't watched it. Huh. Should watch it. <laughs> anyone like yeah it? i've got it disco yeah tech. disco tech is it streaming it mm, maybe crunchyroll if at all okay if not i'll have to find it somewhere or just come over and raid your yes when i move please collection. come raid my shelves you you're like i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to bring a tub of the enemy back yeah you really like, would have to you'll happen. bring the tupperware container <laughs> it's a thing oh, um no it's gonna be like the 10 gallons. <laughs> Katarina did have one more question um, other than saying love you ladies and thank you again for doing this podcast. You're welcome girl. If it weren't for you we wouldn't be doing it. Um, what did you like about Snow White with the red hair? What did I? I like that it wasn't, it wasn't drawn out on the issues. That's what I really enjoyed about it. I'm trying to think of an example of where but I feel like it happens so often where it's like the same issue over and over and over. Like and if over it could only again. be solved by communication. Right. And they have communication. Like there's some parts where she's like, eh, but then he's like, mm, it's like every episode of me. Marmalade Boy. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched that. <sighs> I need to finish it. <laughs> I think I watched it in middle school. I, bo- I have the old Tokyo pop sets and I refuse to get the new ones. I mean, why would you want? I really love my Comic Sans subtitles, guys. Really love them. I'm totally joking. Uh, What did I love about Snow White with the red hair? Um, Ian Sinclair playing Mitsuhide. Mitsuhide Mitsuhide being being drunk slash hypnotized. Obi's little hand twitch. And at the very end... That kiss on the neck that Zen gave Shiryuki when he hugged her and I fucking fell off the couch. That that was what I liked about Snow White with the red hair. I, I'm going to need a little bit of more like chemistry between uh, Mitsuhide and Kiki. I'm just. I would be down with that ship. I would sail that ship. I love Kiki's Kiki. pretty fucking cool. I love her. I said Kiki is a blessing. In my, notes. <laughs> my notes literally say say best moment is the tower kiss. Best episode is the hypnosis episode. Um Kiki is a blessing. I feel bad for Obi. <laughs> and I oh, I did write Zen and Shariyuki is a good non-toxic relationship. This is true. They are kind of hashtag relationship goals, at least once they, they are. realize that they're allowed to spend time with one another. Right. And I feel like toxic, 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 toxicity, toxic, toxicity <laughs> is very common in shoujo anime and shoujo manga. So common. In my opinion, it is. It's very easy. It's very easy for him, for for that to have that that doubt that I'm too. He's too good for me. I'm not good enough for him. And then for him to have the guy to have the same kind of um, opinion where oh she's too good for me and it's kind of like they put themselves down because of it. And quite honestly. Typical shoujo anime and manga is geared towards a very young adolescent um, what's audience the for impressionable impressionable yep. audience like this is geared towards that middle school high school where there's a lot of shit happening to you in a short amount of time. And you don't understand. 
and then seeing these perfect relationships or these romances where it's just so toxic and it makes people wonder how did I stay with him for so long like I've been in that situation I'm sure most of the females that I know or in even males can say why was I in that relationship for so long because we see that toxic relationship and so many things of it being normal right this is a very nice vanilla relationship and I'm not saying vanilla as an insult Mm -hmm. It is just a very sweet relationship between two people. Mm -hmm. It's not my kink, but you know what? (laughs) Well, I mean, nothing can be, not everything can be diabolical. I know, I know. Not everyone can call me little bitch. It's fine. Oh, I did like the line in there when uh, I think it was Obi who said, You want me to step on you? And I was like, Yeah. That makes me think of that Otome game I started playing. (laughs) So that about wraps up our episode on Snow White with the Red Hair. Um, I don't have anything else to add. Gwen, do you have any final thoughts? I don't think so. And I don't think we missed anyone's questions since a lot of them asked similar things. We we got them all. Um, Yep. Did we? Yeah. Because, I mean, there was at least three or four that asked about either recommending a fantasy shoujo anime or what kind of fantasy anime would we like to see. Yep. So we we got all you guys, fam. And thank you so much for all your questions and your comments. Don't forget, for every episode of the Shoujo Trash Showdown, um, you can... Send us questions, comments, or topics you'd like us to discuss that have to do with our theme or not. Um, and we'll definitely take care of y'all. We, we got you, fam. Uh, speaking of our yeah. next question call, um, if you guys hadn't seen on our Twitter, we are going back to monthly episodes for the time being because we are both very busy individuals. And I have massive burnout now that I had to watch 24 episodes of an anime yeah and it's and we don't want to have to we don't want to give you a poor podcast because we're forcing ourselves to watch an right anime. um i so. will not say that there won't be two episodes in april or may but in case there aren't our next episode for april is going to be con 101 so we will be asking you to tell us your favorite con stories, stuff that happened. Maybe if you met a voice actor or if you haven't been to a lot of conventions, if you have any questions. I'm not saying that the two of us are convention experts, uh, but we've definitely been around the block and I go around the country. So, Yes, she does. And even if share stories, even if they're not good stories, because sometimes people need to hear about those because when you go to a convention there's a lot of people and people need to be made aware of right everything i mean cons are awesome but they're sometimes not all sunshine and if babies, you would so. like to share something and you do not want your name read out or it's very long please dm, DM um the shoujo trash showdown twitter podcast yeah we will not if i mean we don't want if it's experience that you want out, but you don't want your name out there, we completely understand. People are crazy. We don't want this in the crazy. Trust. Me. Trust. Yeah. Like we're, we, we are here us. to have fun and a good time I'll and party them. most of the time, but we are aware that there are issues that need to be addressed. So if issues that even cons have paid money to make flyers and professionally made posters and like little stands of rules <laughs> of certain things don't mean this and it's it's kind of scary yeah it's like that. common sense people <laughs> common sense but we'll be here to answer all your questions and let you know the common sense stuff that goes on at anime conventions from your big huge ones to your small local ones so we'll help you out if you want to know what an artist alley really is or you know if you have any questions comments want to share your stories um send it over to at shoujo trash show shoujo spelled with a u show is spelled with a w and then our next promised episode will be in may 
which is my birthday episode because my birthday is on May 30th. Hey, and can we, can anyone guess what her birthday episode is going to be about? <laughs> I was, I mean, I, I think, I think I know what it's going to really be. Do you really think you know? It could be I, so many things, though. You know, it could be so many things, but I'm pretty sure it's Boko no Pico. God damn it. <laughs> I just wanted to eat ice cream in a tank top for my birthday. Why do you have to ruin it for me? <laughs> that is an anime I will never suggest anyone watches. I've never watched I've it myself, seen it. but I don't think anyone should. I've seen it. it. I don't really have a comment on it. Oh, I just thought of another. I mean, it's kind of a ro- romance. Oh. Maybe the Ancient Magnus Bride? Ancient Magnus Bride, yes. That is, a fa- that is definitely a fantasy romance. It's a very different type of romance. I really is. haven't gotten to the romance part of it yet. I'm like about five or six episodes in. It's a very, it's a very challenging romance. I I guess I would have to say. I don't know if <laughs> the same way I can describe it without being like, so here's the story, guys. Here, here's the story of the ancient Magus Bride. Um. Yep. But also, since we're doing, instead of doing um, monthly, I mean, every two weeks, um, definitely let us know what you would like to see. So it, since it's, you know, it's going to be more spread out, we want to make sure that you're still getting what you yes. want. Yes. And when, if we have time to watch more anime, we will definitely let you guys know that we're going to do a bonus episode and we will put it on the Twitter. We have some voting episodes that we'd really like to get out. It's just that it's just the time constraint that we have right now. So we're going to try to make it work. Hopefully we can squeeze in at least one show to trash showdown vote in between the convention episode and my birthday episode, which um, by the way, it's going to be fucking Diabolic Lovers. Nobody is surprised. Shocker. So I guess we could ask, um, what kind of anime would you want to vote on? We could give you, we could give them some, like, options. Yes. Like, do you want it to be idol-themed? Do you want it to be yaoi or BL-themed? Um, even though we just did it, doesn't mean we can do it again. Um... Or do you want something that's kind of like not has some sort of mystical creature or fantasy in it? Like a very slice of life. Like Brocon or we could what's another one that's like not has some sort of Hmm. magic in it? You're just giving it away. (laughs) I'm just saying like that's the only one I can think of right now that's like not has some sort of sci-fi or fantasy or something. Well, I mean, th- we could do Otome. We could do Idol Boys. We could do... Yeah, Oto- okay, so traditional reverse harem. We could do Idol Boys. Yaoi. Um, we could do a Yuri. Yaoi. Okay, yeah, th- those are three good ones. So reverse harem Oto- mm. slash Otome. Idol Boys. Or Boys Who Like Boys. Those were the three we had planned, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially, in some Yeah, so let us know down in the comments or shoot us something on Twitter which out of those three you'd like to have the showdown with the most. And if there's a specific anime you'd like to see as an option for voting. Please don't say Udapri. You guys know we're going to do Udapri by itself and it will take forever. It it will be its own thing, much like Code Realize is going to be yes. a project child. The Udapri project, the Code Realize project. <laughs> project, project Code, Code Realize. Realize coming late, late 2019. <laughs> coming, coming, coming when I move and buy a PS4. <laughs> when she moves, saves a little money exactly. and buys a PS4. Oh, geez. But that's that's what we've got coming up. And like I said, we're going to do our best to put out some episodes in between the ones we have planned. It's just a lot right now. And I really. Already non anime stuff you want us to talk about, like the con 101, like like maybe we could talk about like even if it's not 
shoujo trash she shamed 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 tweeter um we could talk about like collectibles or merch or figures places of where to buy things how to be a collector where i mean because there's a lot of sites i'm sure we've talked about it before but which site is better for what kind of work so if there's anything you guys want we have a list and we keep it and we do have things planned and then our plans sometimes switch around so just let us know what you would like and we will do our best to deliver to you if you want to keep up with more of our shenanigans, you can always follow me here on this channel at Anime Palooza and also on Twitter. But don't talk to me for the next week because I will be tearing in that Camu event. And really, Dr. Camu deserves all my patronage. And you can follow Gwen on a cooking koala two underscore zero. How's your channel coming? Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to use this stupid video oh, no. editing program. It like tells me to do one thing and then I do it and it completely just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So it's so. coming. <laughs> Once I, fair, I, I literally filmed two videos that I can edit that are going to be fairly easy to edit that won't be very demanding, but I got to figure out how. It's all right. You got this, boo got this boo <laughs> so follow Gwen on Twitter for the time being and again you can follow our podcast at Shoujo Trash Show where we have all our polls and take all our suggestions and Gwen posts who to pre gifts it's great fun it's great fun alright well I forgot to take my medicine so I have been coughing that I've been editing out through this whole episode so I'm gonna go do that and um, we can have our happy fairy tale ending does that sound like a good plan me too like so to end our wondrous fairy tale our two heroines Gigi and Gwen fly off into the sunset on their magic rockets and live happily ever after with trash cans dangling off of them the end (laughs) Love your faces. We'll see you next time, guys.